Welcome to 12 poses you should do every day. If you're new here, my name is Melissa. And if you are a returning viewer, then welcome back. You have loved the previous versions of this class. So I decided to make another one. For this version, you're going to need a block and a strap and a wall. My thinking on teaching yoga has changed a bit over the years. And this version really embodies my philosophy of making sure that you're rested, releasing pain from our bodies, regulating our nervous system, and bringing our energy from our heads down into our hearts. So let's start by coming down onto your mat, resting on your backs. You have your knees bent and your feet flat on the floor. You're gonna place one hand on your heart and one hand on your belly. Take a breath in through your nose and let it fall out of your mouth. So allow yourself to arrive here now and then continue breathing in and out through your nose. Feel the support of the earth underneath you. Allow yourself to sink down and into gravity. And then feel your connection with your breathing. And each time you breathe out, Feel the weight of your body dropping more deeply into the ground and more deeply into the present moment. Now become aware of your mind. Notice your mind as a thinking space, a thinking space that loves to believe in the illusion of separation. And this is what the mind does. And let's just shift that to feel the mind as a place of sensation. So instead of identifying with those thoughts, the mind will think that's what it does all day long. We can let it think. But let's just feel, notice how the mind feels right now as a place of sensation. And take a moment to remember who you are as an integral part of the vast and interconnected whole. And then breathe into your heart center. And united in our hearts, knowing we never practice alone in all directions of space and time. There's somebody else practicing with you. We are connected in practice. And we are united in the unconditional love and kindness and compassion that is the truth of who we are and that flows through all human beings. And you can just take your hands and go hand over hand, smoothing down your breastbone here. This is a nice nervous system regulation movement here to release any fear from your heart. And as you do this, just reflect on what it is that you want to receive from your practice today.
You can have an aspiration or an intention or dedicate your practice. And dedicate my practice to all beings that they know the truth of who they are and their place in the interconnected whole. Okay. And then you're going to, we're going to start with our blocks. So you'll stay lying down. So take your block, you're going to hold it between your hands horizontally and take it overhead. So feel a nice lengthening through your spine. So I love this movement because it creates some um, articulation of your spine. It's going to strengthen your abdominals and it's going to strengthen your hip flexors, which are short and weak from sitting. So it's uh, an all round, it just gives so much bang for your buck. So you're going to inhale here. You're going to bring your block up and you're going to draw your rib cage down. You're going to curl all the way up. And you're going to place your block down between your feet. Start it on a low setting. You can even start it on the lowest setting. And then you're going to lift your leg over the block and back. Sitting up nice and tall, so we're in Dandasana. And then you're going to pick up your block again. You're going to inhale. You're going to exhale, roll down through your spine. And take your arms overhead again. So inhale here at the bottom. Exhale, you're going to roll up through your spine. And you can experiment with the height of your block. There's no right or wrong or better best. We're going to accept ourselves exactly where we are on any given day. We're not comparing, we're just loving ourselves as we are. Inhale. Exhale, roll down through our spines. Inhale. Exhale, roll up. And we're going to just keep repeating this pattern with repetition over time. We're going to get stronger. Our spine is going to get juicier. Our abdominals are going to get stronger. We get to breathe while we do it. Stay tall. So this is our number one for today. And we're gonna do one more like this. So I love that for us. So let's go to number two, which is going to be cat pose. You can put your block off to the side. So we're going to come on to all fours. And we're going to exhale, round up through your back, and inhale, arch through our backs. So I love cat pose. I still love cat pose. It's great for articulating your spine your nervous system, it attends to your nervous system, your vagus nerve, so love it. Okay, this time you're gonna exhale round, inhale arch, we're gonna stay here, we're gonna breathe in. And then we're going to exhale. We're going to do add a breath. We're going to add lion's breath. You're going to breathe out, stick your tongue out. 
look up at your third eye. So you're getting some eye yoga, you're getting some breath practice. And when you breathe out, you're gonna release anything that feels stuck, any fear. So inhale as you arch. Exhale, lion's breath. Inhale, arch. And we'll do one more like that. Okay, great. So now we're gonna shift to some thoracic rotations. I love this for getting into our upper back. You're going to bring your right elbow down to your left wrist and you're gonna inhale up. I'm still counting this as our second movement. And we'll do this on the other side. And then we're gonna come for number, sorry, I'm kind of, this is number three, yeah. Because our first one was our centering where we did all that breathing and we did the nervous system release. So then number four is going to be 90-90s. This is so great for our hips. We get external rotation of our hips here, internal rotation of our hips here. You can use your hands as posts, dig into your heels, and then you're gonna switch. So now you get internal rotation of your hips, external rotation of your hips. Okay, and then we're gonna land here, turn towards the short edge of your mat. You're going to lift your back leg, so you're getting some extra internal rotation. Yoga is full, filled with external rotation. So I have been focusing in my practice on adding internal rotation and not so much focus on external rotation, which has created some dysfunction in our bodies and adding more functional movements like this, rather than focusing so much on things like pigeon poses and static stretches. So I'm focusing a lot more in my practices on functional things that will release pain rather than these long static stretches. So again, the internal rotation and if you want more of that, I'm really going in depth with this in our membership community now, with longer programs to support our members through it in a, in a progressive way. Circle. Okay. And then from here, number five, we're gonna go into some lunge pose. Okay, so for lunge, you're gonna take a step forward with your left foot. What you're not gonna do is hang out in the end range of your lunge where there's no support for your joint. I want you to be here in more of a 90-90 lunge. Pelvic tilt forward, you'll feel sensation in the front of your hip, okay? We're going to lean forward, rock back into hamstring stretch. And then you're gonna come forward, take your hands to the inside of your legs, take your inside hand, reach down and rotate up. So we're getting some nice rotation for our spine as well. And then we're going to switch legs. So I want you to step your right leg forward. Again, don't hang out in the end range of the joint where there's no support for it. I want you to drop your right sit bone, pelvic tilt, 
Feel the opening of the front, the left hip. And then we're going to lean forward, rock back. Come forward, inside hand threads the needle and reaches up, so we're adding some rotation. Okay, we're gonna come back. We're gonna add some balance, proprioception, some real life challenge to this by coming up to standing through our lunge. You can hold onto a chair or a wall if you want, if balance is a challenge. So you're gonna step your left leg through. You're in your lunge. Stand on your left foot. You're gonna come up to standing. Bring your knee up and through. Extend your leg. Come back. Lower down. And then we'll come back up. Knee up. Extend, step back, lower down. Come up, knee up, extend, step back, lower down. Come up, knee up, extend, back, lower down. Keep breathing. Okay, let's do that on the other side as well. So we'll start with the right leg in front, tuck the left toes under, press into your right foot, come up, knee up, extend, Bring your knee in, step back, and down. And one more. We'll come up. And then you're going to stand at uh, your mat. <sighs> Take a breath, good job. So that was number five. So we're gonna do number six, which is going to be a rotation of your spine. So we're just gonna add this rotation of your spine. This is Qigong inspired. It's nice because you get some stimulation of your kidneys as well. Great for digestion, great for your spine. Great for all those internal organs. And then we're gonna continue with some side bending. We're just gonna reach up and reach up. This is also great for your spine, so we're opening up the sides of your spine. Also great for your intercostal muscles, for your breathing and for your organs. This is great for uh, your gallbladder meridian, so relieving anger, frustration, irritation.
Okay, so just pause and notice how you're feeling. Notice any release of pain. Notice how you're feeling mentally, emotionally, energetically. And then we're gonna pick up your strap. So this is one, well, this is 12 poses you should do every day. So this is one I do every day. You're gonna pick up your strap. You're gonna take your hands as wide as you need to, to go up and over and up and over. This is called shoulder flossing. You can put that down. So this is great for your shoulder joints and also you will notice that it will relieve neck pain as well. So you can put your strap off to the side. The other one that I really like to do every day for shoulder and neck pain is the shoulder clock. So you're gonna stand by a wall. This is definitely worth clearing wall space for. You're gonna take your arm up and over and you can take it back. And you, if you can start uh, further away from the wall, this is something I do do every day. So it's something that um, for me has definitely improved over time. You want to be perpendicular to the wall. And then we're going to switch to the other side. And it will be different from side to side. That's okay, our bodies aren't symmetrical. And you want to, as much as possible, be perpendicular to the wall. 90 degrees to the wall. Keep breathing. Remember, you can step away from the wall as much as you need to as you progress in this exercise. We get to be beginners. The other thing when I started this exercise too, when I got to a sticky spot, I would just slow down and work through the stick. So it, do, it does improve. So this is definitely one you should do every day, one that I do do every day, and it has paid off dividends. So way less shoulder pain and neck pain. It's definitely eliminated the neck and shoulder pain for me. Okay, we're gonna come down and onto your bellies. We're going to do some cobra building. I love cobra building for low back pain. It's great to move your spine backwards. You'll notice there's really not any forward folding in this. We do, we spend so much time sitting and rounded. I've really kind of dropped it from my teaching. It's not that I never do it. You will see it in my teaching. I do love it for, um, the bladder meridian, which runs along the whole back of your body, which really helps to get into the nervous system. But generally, um, it's just not that functional to do more of it when we're already doing so much of it. So hands under your shoulders, roll your shoulders back and up. You're going to reach your sit bones down towards your heels, tuck your toes under, reach back through your heels, and then you're gonna lift up and lower down. That spine should be nice and juicy by now. But just come up as far as is comfortable for you. This is so great for any kind of back pain that you might be having. Definitely one you should do every day.
And then we're gonna come into Malasana, which is a squat pose. I like to use the block for this. You can even, well, actually, I don't wanna do it against the wall for this one because uh, we're gonna add some thoracic rotations to it, which is a nice variation that I really like. So you're gonna sit on your block, which helps to eliminate any knee pain in this. That's why I do it on the block. If you can do it without the block, you can do it without the block, but that's why I use the block. It takes the pressure off the knees. And this is so great for digestion, particularly elimination, because you can see it puts you in the position that <laughs> before toilets that we would have used for elimination, <laughs> which makes it easier to eliminate. So it supports the natural elimination process. And we're gonna add, take your hand to the inside of your knee, and you're gonna add those thoracic rotations, which are challenging this position, so we're happy with whatever movement we get here. Then you're gonna release that, very good. And you're gonna rest back either for Shavasana, which can be very nice and restful, or legs up the wall. And um, both are gonna be very rejuvenating to nourish you, to re-energize you. Um, I do like legs up the wall. It's probably my primary yoga practice these days is legs of the wall, some twists side to side, really uh, helps to regenerate me. So legs of the wall or Shavasana is your 12th pose, something you should do every day. And I have a poem for you here. Okay, so let yourself settle into your shavasana or your legs up the wall. And feel yourself receiving rest. Rest is something that we can avoid and push away in our culture, which really values endless productivity, but rest is productive. We can't always be doing. We are going to be more effective in our doing when we take the time to rest. So that's why number 12 is a conscious rest, taking time to rest, which will support you in being who you are here to, you are meant to be. But if you don't take the time to rest, then you're not going to have that energy to do what you're meant to do in this world. So rest is very important. So I have a poem for you here. It's called One Big Perspective by Rosemary Watola Traumer. A day so blue, even my greatest fears are dissolved into sky. A day so blue, even my greatest fears are dissolved into sky.
So gradually allow your breath to deepen. You can start to wiggle and stretch out. Just take a moment here to reflect back on your experience of the class as you're starting to come back from the stillness and the silence. And ask yourself what's one small thing that you're going to take with you off your mat and into your life. As you start to bend your knees and roll to your side. Make your way up to seated. If you enjoyed this class, I would appreciate so much you giving it a thumbs up, a like, and putting, I did my 12 poses today in the comments. And if you haven't already subscribed to this class, uh, subscribe to the channel, then that also means so much to me. And I'm sending you much love from beautiful British Columbia. May your joy be as deep as the Pacific Ocean. May you be as rooted as the old trees in our forest. And may you be as strong as our mountains. May all beings everywhere be happy and free. And may the thoughts, words, and actions of my own life contribute in some way to the happiness and freedom for all.